Hey guys, Tom Cornelius here, application engineer at 3M. Today the topic is going to be eight cleaning techniques for eight different common substrates in the body shop. We know there's a lot of different cleaning methods out there, but today we want to focus on best practices as well as some tips and tricks to get the best results. It's important to remember to wear your proper PPE. You can see today I'm wearing my respirator, a pair of safety glasses, as well as protective gloves. Another important thing to remember is that this video is intended for the professional settings, such as the body shop or paint shop. For more information on safety and warranty, please check out the link in the description below. So the first substrate that we're gonna focus on is the actual OEM paint. So the car comes into the body shop and has damage. Our recommendation is that you give the complete car, including the undercarriage, a complete car wash using warm soapy water. For best results, we actually want to rinse with warm water as well. Then we can allow to dry. After we have given a complete car wash, we want to come back to the specific repair area and actually use a solvent-based cleaner using fresh paper towels. Uh, we want to avoid things like rags, which have a tendency to store contaminants. And so really why we want to stick to a water-based cleaner followed up by a solvent-based cleaner is just simply because water-based cleaners have the ability to strip and remove certain contaminants better than solvent-based cleaners and vice versa. These are common things like oils, waxes, silicones, could be tree sap, bird droppings, all these types of things, tar from the road. These are the things we want to keep in mind and we want to use, like I said, a water-based cleaner as well as a solvent-based cleaner. In the event that we are unable to perform a complete car wash, we need to make certain to, at the very least, come to the specific repair area, clean the repair area with both a water-based cleaner as well as a solvent-based cleaner. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now. So first, I'm applying my water-based cleaner. You can see, using a fresh paper towel. And I'm gonna begin wiping, flipping to fresh sides as I wipe. We can use a secondary paper towel if necessary. And we want to make certain to wipe until completely dry, again, flipping sides as we go. Following the water-based cleaner, we need to also use a solvent-based cleaner. And this is going back to what we talked about, that the solvent's going to strip different contaminants than the water and vice versa. Same method, again wiping, flipping to fresh sides. We can use a secondary paper towel if necessary. And again, just remembering to wipe until completely dry. At this point, we're ready to begin the sanding process. Number two, sanded original paint. So this is gonna be the actual OEM paint that we're sanding. Good example of this would be perhaps an adjacent panel that we're prepping for a blend. Uh, one big recommendation for this is going to be to use dust extraction during the actual sanding process. Once we've completed the sanding process, we can actually come back and use, again, the dust extraction. Today I have a Festool machine, but in addition to this, we can also use the 3M Scotch-Brite clean and finish disc, and this allows the actual dust to just travel right through the pad, and so we still have the vacuum system, but we're able to suck up additional dust that might be on the surface. Once we've finished using this, I'm still gonna come back and just for good measure, use an air blower, using clean, dry air, and blow over the entire surface, but at that point, there should be very minimal dust on the surface. So let me show that to you guys. So at this point guys, we're ready to move on to our actual cleaning step. Again, we're gonna start out with a water-based cleaner and we're gonna follow up with a solvent-based cleaner. Again, we stress that you follow your paint company's recommendation when it comes to the cleaners to be used. And so with that, I'm gonna begin the cleaning process. One important thing to keep in mind, however, is that we wanna wipe until completely dry. This becomes very critical in this step for a number of different reasons. One of them is going to be to make certain that we remove all the contaminants on the surface and another big one is that if we don't, 
we can actually have some clouding or hazing that can actually appear on the surface that could actually be visible even after we spray clear coat on dark colors. So let me show that to you guys. So again guys, we recommend clean fresh paper towels folded so that we can flip to fresh sides. One important tip to keep in mind is to wipe until completely dry, flipping the paper towel to a fresh side in order to effectively remove contaminants and also to avoid the cloudy residual film that can form on the surface. As you can see, on the one side I wiped until completely dry and on the other side I did not. And so failing to wipe completely dry could lead to paint defects like fish eyes for example because we're not getting all the contaminants off the surface and further the cloudy film that tends to form could even be visible underneath a clear coat on darker colors in your blend areas and so with that just keep in mind that we need to perhaps blow off again and tack as necessary number three clean bare steel so we're assuming that the steel has been sanded as you can see on this panel we've already sanded again we've used dust extraction which is recommended and we also want to use, once again, the 3M Scotch-Brite clean and finish disc. Again, this is going to help you get the remainder of the dust off the surface. After we use this disc, we can come back once again and blow off with clean dry air, just for good measure. Let me show that to you once again. So typically we would be prepping bare steel probably for body filler or glaze or adhesive, etc. But we can't stress enough that even though we used the clean and finish disc and we also used an air blower, we're not yet ready to apply our product. We must use a solvent-based cleaner in conjunction with the paper to towel before we're ready to apply our product. We're going to apply our solvent-based cleaner. And at that point, we want to wipe until completely dry flipping fresh sides, as you can see, to get rid of that residual. You want to keep wiping until completely dry. So we've cleaned this now with our solvent cleaner and a fresh paper towel. On bare steel, we do want to avoid water-based cleaners in this step as to not introduce moisture, which could heighten the risk of flash rusting. Further, we want to apply the product or material as soon as possible to avoid open exposed bare metal as steel can flash rust in 30 minutes in high humidity. Number four, sanded bare aluminum. So aluminum prep is similar to steel, however, we do want to remember to separate our aluminum tools from our steel tools to reduce the risk of corrosion amongst other issues. Once we've sanded our aluminum, we want to go ahead and take clean dry air and an air blower, blow off the surface, followed by a solvent-based cleaner with a fresh paper towel. Let me show that to you. So after we've wiped until completely dry using a solvent-based cleaner, we're ready to apply our material. We want to emphasize that you apply the material as soon as possible as to avoid any oxidation that could onset. Aluminum can begin to oxidize in roughly 60 minutes in high humidity, so something to keep in mind. So again, in closing, steel and aluminum are similar in their preparation, but there are some differences. Like we said, we want to emphasize that you keep the tools separate when you're working with the two to avoid corrosion and other issues. Want to make certain to completely blow off our aluminum, followed by a solvent-based cleaner with a paper towel. At that point, we are ready to apply our material. 
and we want to emphasize that you apply the material as soon as possible to avoid the onset of oxidation. Number five, sanded raw plastic. Similar to other substrates, you want to use both a water-based cleaner and a solvent-based cleaner prior to sanding. Here I just have a demonstration panel. We cut out this section from a plastic bumper. One special consideration for plastic is that once the substrate has been sanded to reveal raw plastic, we should avoid liquid cleaners and instead use clean dry air in conjunction with paper towels as cleaners can become trapped in the plastic substrate and lead to blistering. Let me demonstrate that. So again, just to reiterate, once we have sanded our plastic and we have raw plastic exposed, at this point we no longer want to use any type of liquid cleaners, whether it be solvent or water. We don't want to introduce that to the raw plastic as it can become trapped. So the rec recommendation here is to use clean dry air in conjunction with the paper towel, and then of course use any adhesion promoters as necessary or recommended. Number six, sanded filler and glaze. Similar to some of the other processes we've looked at, we strongly recommend the use of dust extraction during the sanding process. On this panel, we've completed our sanding process and we're ready to begin the cleaning process. Again, we can use the 3M Scotch-Brite clean and finish disc with our Festool sander to remove additional debris or dust that might be on the surface, followed up by uh, air blower with clean dry air. So again, I'm gonna demonstrate that. So with body filler and glazes, we want to avoid applying the solvent-based cleaner directly to the body filler or glaze itself. As we talked about in other videos, uh, body filler and glaze can actually absorb this material and could lead to issues down the road. So the solution is just to simply apply directly to a paper towel, wipe the surface with a saturated paper towel, followed by a secondary paper towel to wipe until completely dry. So let me demonstrate that. Okay guys, so that completes the cleaning process for sanded body filler and or glaze. Another additional thing to remember is that we don't recommend a water-based cleaner on this step as we don't want to introduce any additional moisture to the panel which could lead to flash rusting on the bare steel or it could even permeate into the body filler itself. Number seven, sanded composites. So you can see on this panel, we've already completed a composite repair. Before we begin the repair process and the sanding process, we clean the entire panel with a water-based cleaner, followed by a solvent-based cleaner. At that point, we were ready to begin our sanding process. A Couple things to keep in mind is we can go ahead and use dust extraction during the sanding prep process. After we've completed the sanding, we do have a couple special considerations. One of those is at this point, we no longer want to use a solvent cleaner or a water-based cleaner. Really, any liquid cleaner we don't want to introduce into the composite itself could lead to a host of issues like blistering, pitting, etc. And so with that, the cleaning process basically just entails, after we've completed the sanding process, we can use, again, similar to raw plastic, clean, dry air, and an air blower in conjunction with a paper towel. Number eight, sanded surface primer. This is going to be very similar to step number two where we outline sanding OEM paint. Uh, after we've finished the sanding process, we've completed the sanding process on this panel. Again, using dust extraction, strongly recommended. We can follow up using the 3M Scotch-Brite clean and finish disc, followed by an air blower with clean dry air, very similar to many of the other processes. Let me show you that. Next, with sanded surface primer, we do want to use both a water-based cleaner as well as a solvent-based cleaner. 
and many of the other tips that we've gone through in this video apply. We want to go ahead and wipe until completely dry with the water-based cleaner and we want to do the same thing with the solvent-based cleaner. So as you can see, again, we recommend clean, fresh paper towels folded so that we can flip to fresh sides, both with the water-based cleaner as well as the solvent-based cleaner. One important tip to keep in mind is to wipe until completely dry, flipping the paper towel to a fresh side in order to effectively remove contaminants and avoid that cloudy residual that we talked about in previous steps. At that point, you can go ahead and blow and tack as necessary. Okay guys, that wraps it up for sanded surface primer. We've now cleaned this with a water-based cleaner followed by a solvent-based cleaner, and we've applied all of the other best practices as you've seen throughout this video, wiping until completely dry, flipping sides with the paper towel. This allows us to remove that cloudy haze that can form, as well as make certain that we've removed as many contaminants as possible. At this point, we can go ahead and possibly blow off again and tack as necessary, and we're ready for sealer or paint. Okay guys, that wraps it up for today. Hope you learned something in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As you can see, there's a lot of similarities in these steps as we take a look at the cleaning processes, but there is also some fundamental differences. Hopefully, again, that you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to comment below. You can like or subscribe. If you wanna find more videos like this, you can go ahead and check out the 3M Collision Repair Academy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.